Hello, I'm Brian Watrous of VMware Education. In this segment, we'll be exploring how to use storage profiles. Storage profiles enable the creation of data stores that provide varying levels of service. You can categorize data stores based on system-defined or user-defined levels of service. For instance, you could create tiered storage with gold storage, silver storage, bronze storage, where the gold storage is your your high tier storage, faster and typically more expensive, and the bronze tier storage might be your least expensive, uh, slowest storage. With profile driven storage, you can provision virtual machines and ensure that the virtual machines files end up in the correct storage. We'll explain what that means in a moment. And furthermore, once your VMs are up and running, you can easily check for compliance to ensure that the virtual machines are using the type of storage they're supposed to use. As I said a moment ago, you can define storage capabilities either based on system-defined capabilities or user-defined capabilities. In the demonstration I'm about to perform, I'll show you how to make use of user-defined capabilities. The system-defined capabilities are provided when you use a storage array that's enabled for VASA. Profile-driven storage is used in conjunction with virtual machine storage profiles. Storage profiles can contain one or more storage capabilities. We'll illustrate that in the demonstration about to take place. When you create storage profiles, you can associate those storage profiles with one or potentially multiple VMs. And once you've done so, it's very simple at that point onwards to verify whether or not virtual machines are using the storage that they should or storage that they're not supposed to be using. Storage profiles makes it very easy to identify virtual machines that are not compliant with your storage policies. In this demonstration, we'll see how to set up storage profiles and then we'll see how to use storage profiles. I'll begin by going to the home screen and in the management section I'm going to click on the VM storage profiles icon. Now there are a number of different ways I could proceed from here. Uh, what I'm going to illustrate is my own personal uh, preferred way of setting up storage profiles. I'll begin by clicking on the button labeled Enable Virtual Machine Storage Profiles. And in here I'm simply going to enable storage profiles. The next thing that I need to do is to create storage capabilities. Now in the uh, prior lecture, uh, we talked about the, the possibility of creating storage capabilities such as gold storage, silver storage, bronze storage. What I'd like to do is uh, use a slightly different example here to illustrate another way that you could use these storage capabilities. In order to create the storage capabilities, I'm going to go to the button labeled manage storage capabilities and in here I can create all the user defined storage capabilities that I want uh, I simply need two for my example here so I'll click add the first storage capability I'll add will be replicated storage and I'll provide a description here um, this storage capability is for data stores that are replicated to our DR site. And then as I'm sure you already anticipate, I'll add another storage capability. This time it'll be called non-replicated storage. And we'll put in a description that says data stores that are not replicated to our DR site. So I now have two storage capabilities, one for replicated storage, one for non-replicated storage. The next step is I need to create a virtual machine storage profile 
To do so, I'll click on the button labeled Create VM Storage Profile. And again, I'm going to create two of these. The first one I'm going to call Critical VMs. And as you might imagine, these will be the VMs that are the, the most important to our organization. These are the VMs that we need to ensure get replicated to the DR site. Uh, again, I could type a description here to speed up our demonstration. I'll skip the description in this case. So we now have a VM storage profile being created for our critical VMs. Our critical VMs, as we just said, need to be replicated. So I'm associating the critical VMs storage profile with the replicated storage storage capability. We have a summary screen. If I click Finish, I now have one of my VM storage profiles. I'm going to quickly create the other. The other will be called non-critical VMs. Again, to speed up the process, I'll skip the description. Our non-critical VMs are not replicated. Again, I'm making an association between a VM storage profile and a storage capability. Once again, we have a summary screen. And a few moments later, I have a pair of VM storage profiles along with the pair of storage characteristics, excuse me, storage capabilities that we created earlier. As you can see, we now have a pair of virtual machine storage profiles. In addition, we have the pair of storage capabilities that we defined earlier. To make use of these, what we'll do is go to the home screen, then go to the data store and data store clusters view. And what we're going to do is assign special characteristics to each of these data stores. I'll begin with data store A. I'll choose to assign a user to define data store capability. And let's imagine that data store A is one of our replicated data stores. So I simply choose replicated storage from our list of storage capabilities. Then click OK. I'll do the same thing with data store B. Data store B will also be a replicated data store. So I'll choose once again to assign a user defined storage capability. Once again, this will be replicated storage. And then I'll do one more data store. I could do this with all my data stores or any um, subset of them. I'm going to do it to data store A, data store B, and my shared VMs, excuse me, my shared data store. Except the shared data store, I'm going to specify is non-replicated storage. So now I've associated the storage capabilities with my data stores themselves. At this point, I'm ready to show you what we can do. I'm going to switch views and go back to VMs and Templates view. Now when I create a new virtual machine, we'll do so by right-clicking and choosing New Virtual Machine. We're going to be able to leverage those storage profiles. Again, I'll create a typical virtual machine. I already have a virtual machine called a uh, new virtual machine, so let's call this one another virtual machine. We'll specify that this virtual machine should run in my cluster, specifically on host one. And here is where we can see storage profiles in action. Right now, this virtual machine has no storage profile associated with it. But if this was one of the critical virtual machines in my infrastructure, I could simply choose that VM storage profile. So I'm specifying this is a critical VM. And notice what happens to the interface. Currently, I just have a list of four data stores. But when I say that this VM is a critical VM, the storage profile mechanism aids me by clearly displaying which data stores are appropriate or correct for this virtual machines and which ones are not. 
So the two data stores that are compatible are data stores A and B. I can choose from either of those and end up with my VM being in compliance with our storage policies. Now to illustrate the uh, ability of storage profiles to detect when I misconfigure a virtual machine, I'm going to intentionally choose the wrong type of storage. So if I choose shared storage, again, that's not the right type of storage for a critical VM. That's for our non-critical, non-replicated VMs. And again, we'll continue to uh, create this virtual machine. Uh, as I do so, I'd like to point out one thing I did not say previously, which is that the, uh, a, the storage profiles mechanism itself is not what would perform the replication. Um, that's just a characteristic of the underlying storage array itself. Well, we see here that the disk capacity of this disk is larger than we have, so I will simply go back and fix that. I don't want a 40 gigabyte virtual disk. I'm not going to use this virtual machine. I'll simply say a one gigabyte disk. I have plenty of room for that. And recall the virtual machine that I'm creating is having its files placed in the incorrect type of storage. But we'll go ahead and allow it to do so. And notice when we go explore that new virtual machine, the one we titled another virtual machine, if we look at its summary tab, we're immediately made aware that there's a, 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 an issue with compliance here. This virtual machine's files are not stored in the correct type of storage. As you'll recall, this is a critical VM, which we can see here. But if we look here, we see that whatever storage this thing's using, it's not the right type of storage. We can see exactly what a VM's storage location is in the storage section. But again, this VM storage is not compliant. To show you how you can fix that, I will launch a storage vMotion migration, which is also tied in with the storage profile's capability. If I choose to migrate a virtual machine and change its data store, that's going to invoke a storage vMotion migration. When I perform a storage vMotion migration, I have the ability to change the formatting of the disk from thick to thin or vice versa. I'm going to leave the format of the disk alone, but I also have the ability to either change the virtual machine storage profile, uh, which right now is set to critical VMs. I could change that to something else if I want, but again, assuming we've got the right VM storage profile associated with this virtual machine, we should just leave this set as it is, and notice that once again, storage profiles is making abundantly clear that the correct choice for this particular virtual machine, because it is a critical VM, is either data store A or data store B. So to fix the compliance issue, I'll simply choose data store B. Could have chosen data store A, but I chose data store B. I'll click next. I'll click finish. And storage vMotion will migrate that virtual machine from the incorrect data store into the correct data store. And once that storage vMotion is complete, if we simply refresh, we'll see that that virtual machine is now in compliance with the storage policies. At any point in time, though, if I want to see if a virtual machine is compliant with its storage policy, I can always right-click a virtual machine, choose VM Storage Profile, Manage Profiles is where I'd go if I decided that this was not a critical VM and should instead have some other VM storage profiles, such as non-critical. But to check for compliance, I simply select VM Storage Profile, Check Profiles, Compliance. And once again, I'll see the results of that check on the Summary tab for the virtual machine right here. And again, as we saw before, we corrected this problem already. The VM is currently compliant with the storage profile. This completes our demonstration. VMware Education Services offers training in over 500 training centers across the world in 60 different countries. We offer both direct training and training through our VMware authorized training centers. We offer instructor-led training in both classroom and live online formats. We offer private on-sites and e-learning modules available online. To find out more information, 
please see us online at the URLs listed on the screen. Thank you.